Go greetings. I am Lies and I use she her. And I am Scandal and I use they them. And let's play, play a game, game together. together. We have just started, was it chapter two? Chapter seven. Oh, holy shit. Well, because remember the first five chapters right, of right, the prologue? Right, right, okay. So right, chapter two of In Astra's Story, but chapter seven officially because the prologue I think is... this is like chapter four of Astra's Story, like if you had to go section by section, mm -hmm. um, and but they, they, they do them weird. Anyway. <clears throat> at any rate, <clears throat> I wake from a dreamless sleep to brisk knocking at my guest chamber door. <gasps> what is that rapping, that tapping at my chamber door? <clears throat> uh, morning, Kohai. I hope you slept well. We have a lot to do today. I love everyone calling them Kohai. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Hello. I, the Countess is livid with herself for missing a day of the preparations. The preparation? Yeah, well, we're going to learn what that is. A movement by the door over her head catches my eye. My stomach drops. Inching along the doorframe is Faust, her tongue flicking wildly. I swallow and try not to stare. Is Faust doing a practical joke? Is it that nobody knows that Astra has a snake? Or that Faust is there at all? Or that Question there is a snake? Question mark? I'm not sure what this is about. Let's find out. Okay. It's mm. that headache of hers. Hey, what are you... Is there something behind me? I'm also, like, up above the door frame. Like, how, how are you attached, dear snake? She's attached to the door frame. Yeah. Inching along, it would have been better just to be like she's inching along the door frame that lines the entrance way. Yeah. Before I can speak, she whirls around, gasping as Faust drops in shock to the floor and dashes out into the hallway. Uh, the, the, wait, Faust can dash? Yeah. Faust doesn't not have legs. Not slither, dash. Not zoom. I thought dashing required Zips. legs, but maybe it doesn't. I really thought dashing was a leggy thing. I think dash cuz I think dashing is specifically a leg oriented activity. That's what I was thinking you too. You can't dash. Maybe Faust instantly has legs and goes nyum and then does not have them again and that's why she's so like flower. I mean, snakes do have like oh, there's particularly some of them you can actually find uh, little little echoes of of legs that like a little to be. leggy scales. Uh -huh. Okay, so I did this on my uh, a couple of my snakes and it's it's basically like um this sort of uh, basically a structural artifact of, of their evolutionary path mm -hmm. where at some point they came from something that had legs or fins or something, right? Right. And so down, uh, there's like two places where you can find them, but mostly it's more obvious down near, you know, the back end of the snake. And you can find scales that would make room for leggies to grow. Mm -hmm. It's super cute. It's just this little like mirrored anomaly around them. Well, and like I said, there are some of like snake varieties that actually have more pronounced basically little nubbins and there's actually basically even for some of them they're like there's some basically remnants of bone that's mm -hmm. inside Interior, yeah yeah and in, inside the snake itself but did you see that did you see that snake it fucking had legs it did <laughs> i'll tell you what i saw that snake oh my god what if it gets into the nursery we have a nursery uh it's probably for chandra 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 oh why wouldn't but, they mention that in Nadia's route? Well, because, you know, we have to learn about that here, because you're expected to play this one first and apply everything you learned as the building blocks for everybody else. But that's not fair. It's fine. And that was actually kind of my point. But the thing is, is I'm also like, why would you... That would be fine if a snake got into the mousery? I gotta tell you, there'd probably be a shit ton of snakes hanging out going... I smell mice. It smells like oh mice. Oh my god. And the it cats. So much mice. And the other animals, the other predators going, oh my fucking god. Just the That dogs. is a bouquet. The dogs a haven. in the mousery room. Ooh. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just snakes. Anyway, why are going to the mousery? Oh my god. Also, though, I'm like, we are saying that no one um, knows about the snake at all. It's like when a snake crawls up the table in the prologue. I'm also finding that to be very goddamn silly, because, like, Faust could totally sleep with you, and, like, Portia has seen unusual animals, like, especially with Nadia and Chandra, so I could imagine, honestly, they'd be like, oh my god, you'd be like, it's okay, Faust, Faust belongs to Faust Mastra. is connected to me. Mastra. <laughs> I mean, this is Faust. Um, Aster. Aster. <laughs> She, this is Faust. She's with me. She's with me. We're together. It's my plus it's one. It's okay. She's my plus one. Yep. Portia. 
Oh. Uh oh. Oh, okay. I Is ooh. she headed for the mousery nonetheless? I don't think so. Oh. Which I think is very silly. So, <clears throat> uh, Portia launches off down the hall with remarkable speed. Uh, since why, hence why I've remarked on it. <clears throat> and I am in my pyjamas, hot on her heels, uh, sweating already. Cause already. I really just woke up. And I was in bed when she came in because the knocking on the door is what woke me. And so whatever I was sleeping in, which is, you know, a sort of silky, comfy nightgown, it's a little bit like revealing and flattering, but not horribly so, is what I am now running down the hall in with, you know, bare feet because I did not put on dressing slippers or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Sweating already. And hey, we've actually gotten back, though, to The Apprentice is a goddamn mess. Yes. We actually haven't seen I'm that not yet. very athletic. Yes. Yep. Uh-huh. <sighs> okay, which way did it go? Kohai, do you see it? That's the fastest snake with legs I've ever seen. <laughs> Kohai. Perhaps it is a lizard? Uh, maybe maybe it a is lizard. a fast worm, because a slow worm is strong. <laughs> <laughs> like I really I really wish somewhat like okay, I know some snakes are fast, but like can fast I? is a fucking python. Can I please? It's a little constrictor type. They're Those not fast. fuckers are so not fast! It's okay, They're magic so snake. slow and chunky! Magic snake. Yes, magic, magic snake. But I also, know. I would just love to see a picture of, fa of Faust with legs. <laughs> it's a little, really, the little yeah. like sp spinning fast cartoon legs underneath. Yes! <laughs> be do, do you say it? I am not good with snakes, but there's no way I'm going to Oh, bounce around a hundred miles a minute. I literally ju just woke up. Um, Hello. hold on, give me, a, give me a moment. I also need to catch my breath. I, we are just in time to see a wildly wriggling tail, which is also not characteristic of a constrictor. A uh, whip around the corner at the end of the hall, but makes more sense with something with leggies and a made-up snake. Ooh. Um, here we go. I, uh, it's headed for the garden. We'll never find it out there. Uh, out go to the birds. Oh, they're not bred for combat. They must have a chance. Portia, Portia, Portia. I Portia do, having your um, own experience. You don't understand. Kohai gently just like, I really did just. Kohai, just, I am awake. Just, I'm awake. And I have I just am, been foghorned to death. I am full of adrenaline because I am so awake. Um, uh, uh, Portia. Portia, it's a garden. There are probably lots of snakes out there. Are you saying we have no garter snakes? We have no local snakes? We have no no other things that are predators for the birds? Only this the one thing? It's, Portia, it's okay. You are overreacting. Also, I want to ask a question. The birds are not bred for this, according to whom? Okay. Like, what are How we, many birds do you have that are not omnivorous okay. and not, are not violent? Chickens will eat snakes. They will. Peacocks will eat snakes. They will. Most birds will, in fact, eat a snake. Yep. Like... If it is bigger, or if even the snake goes after it, they will at least fight back. But I am... They're not bred for this. We didn't even So we're saying they're any... parrots. We're saying they're all parrots. Ah, uh, parrots will fight back. They've totally grown up with predators. But they won't eat it. Nah, I mean... It's maybe? True. The thing is, is I love when people go, this animal will never do that thing. I'm like, I betcha, if given the opportunity, like, cows are probably way more insectivorous than we want to give them credit for, as All an grazing animals are, because you eat bugs in the grass. Uh-huh, and some parasites actually rely on that particular behavior. That's true. Uh, but, because, you know, they're not that discriminating, actually. I'm just like, also, also I know, like, cows that accidentally eat mice. Interesting question. accidentally eat... Interesting question. What? So Portia's going, the birds are not bred for that. What birds? I'm going, one, what birds? Two, how much do you know about bird breeds? Uh-huh. And do you take care of or keep the birds in the garden amongst your many, many other jobs, dear? Which is actually really funny, because again, based on what we learned in, like, Nadia's route, she really never left, apparently, Nadia's space sort as of. it were there was a sort of level of implied she's always been there for me even though i wasn't awake and i didn't see this and it always seems to be like and this was she was the best at this ever but now now that nady is awake it seems like she has every job possible which sounds wild yes for someone who literally couldn't read and write apparently in nadia's route much until basically she told nadia that she could because it was very obvious she could because she was taught to by the doctor that I can't remember the name of right now. It's okay. All right, it's fine. The sibling. I also, I'm so disappointed 
Uh-oh. Portia uh-huh. didn't have some story still of being like, and I read to my lady when I was learning how to read and write. I want that so bad. Honestly, my, my headcanon really hard is just that when Portia was learning how to read and, you know, the, the good doctor, um, sp- uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Right. Nizali? No. Niz- no. My Maybe. Nizali. Maybe. Anyway, Lord, um, I was like, here, practice these things, practice with these books. And she's like, well, I'll read to Nadia. Right. Because that's that's a great way to you know basically drive me to focus and to um, practice and it's a good way to share even if Nadia is asleep. Mm-hmm. Portia's face goes white even though she is always white as she um, thinks of the hundreds. <gasps> Her freckles lose their color. The hundreds of rare plump birds warbling in the garden outside. We're talking okay. maybe just pheasants. <gasps> oh no, what we're talking partridges. There are plenty of birds, but we're talking white birds. So the only thing I can think of Designer are we talking... pigeons. 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 But pigeons aren't underground. Well, they could be if and they also some... do have the ability to if fly they are, away. If they are very fancy pigeons that do not have the ability to fly. Also, my honey, this mm. is not like a fox getting into a uh, hen house. A hen house. It's not. A bird. A bird. One bird could be eaten, and, and I that think would be house it. Side and that size, and that would be it. Yeah. Like I got to tell you, if a python of well, maybe two birds, depending on how big they are. Yep. I was gonna say, especially but also is, depending on how big the Faust most is too. you're going to lose is like two birds. Yeah. That's unless it's like I would tiny actually baby be chickens. more concerned truly about the snake than I mm-hmm. would be about the birds because once they also sometimes all get in a flock, they will all gang up on snakes. Okay, just snake. so you know, there are tons and tons and tons of birds that kill snakes. Yes, they do. Bunches and even, bunches and bunches. Like I said, even if it's just to kill them because they're like, oh my god, you're here and I will harass you, which is and why snakes dangerous. are stealth predators or they're in waiting predators because yes. they can actually easily die and they actually talk about how it's very important for the snake to do- they don't have a lot of defenses okay they're just cute and they have camouflage plump birds are warbling in the garden outside uh, before she can work herself into more of a frenzy because she's really already in a frenzy she is in a she hardcore is. frenzy i find myself blurting out the only words that come to mind because I am not familiar with her being this kind of upset, and again, I did also, just you, wake up. I will also say that for this, too, this is a little strange, because you'd kind of be like, I don't even really know who you are as a person. We don't know that, because we as the player don't know that, but we don't have any idea how long uh, she and Kohai have known each other. Uh, well, it hasn't been established here how long we've been at the palace. I mean, that's true. I just keep being really confused by it. It's okay. It. Drop, drop the other roots if possible. We don't know how long we've been here at all. It didn't say the next day. It didn't say later. Everything seems very established. We already know where the library is. We know how it works. We already know these people. Right. So this is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Otherwise, they come, to, come mind. to mind. I'll take care of it. She doesn't eat birds. Oh, it's she doesn't eat birds. If that, I assume that's true if you choose it. I would imagine it would be true. It's also a way to to establish, I know who this snake is without being able to spit that all out because sometimes you can't come to those words. Right, especially when you were just spoken up. I guess that that establishing, hi, by the way, I know this snake. I'm using Uh she. I'm using a pronoun specifically Uh for the bird. Even though I know that's being exclusive because you could say they. Mm -hmm. um, Because I still am weirded out how spirit animals or... Whatever the hell they're supposed to be. Companion animals, sparkle animals, uh, fucking, what are the, what are Let's they... say Faust says familiars. Says, familiars, thank says you. she, and has established her own pronouns. Which would be fine. I just would love to know that. Yes. Like, I've always found that interesting, actually, in people's stories, where you're really like, hang on. You go back to them as, as an older person, and you look back and you go, wow, child me really didn't at all investigate. Or question anything. Uh-huh. Going... They went, this is the suspension of disbelief, and you went, I am suspended. I am so suspended, I am off at another, like, fucking universe. Do I will interrupt never... me while I read? I have... will not get my attention. I will not critically examine any of this, because my suspension of disbelief is out the window, it's gone. It is so lacking thought. I was going to say, it is suspended, <laughs> as one does with a high... High skilled rigging. <laughs> and empty. Only book. Only All right, book. so All she right. doesn't eat birds. Uh, gently, gently gathers up Portia's hands as she's wringing them in front of her. It's just, <gasps> Portia, it's okay. She doesn't eat birds. What? How do you know? She doesn't eat birds? Uh, I love that. We were correct. Is that your snake? How are I? The emotions of, I'm bawling, I'm stunned, I'm collected. Well, the thing is, is she was just working herself up uh-huh. to a frenzy. That was, she was starting to get teary-eyed. That wasn't uh-huh. she was bawling. Oh, I know, I know. It's just... That was then, a, huh? And then you're like, wait, what? And you huh? Who? Wait, sh- how do you... Yeah. How do you say, sh- is she, she your snake? Um, 
Suddenly, we're knocked aside. It's the Chamberlain. Somersaulting towards the veranda. Wait, actually somersaulting? Somersaulting, like rolling? Like they fell over? I... Somersaulting does not just I mean love careening. That image. I, I'm, honestly, I would giggle my... Because this sounds a little bit like an anime scene. Uh -huh. So you have a character just bling, 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 and you're like... Wow, you are what? in a hurry and you are so excited. Uh -huh. Holy cow. Honestly, I love that image. Like, that's actually pretty funny to me. Uh -huh. But yeah, like, if you're going to go quite literally, if you're going to take this as a, quote, more realistic story, which is silly in that uh -huh. way, uh, but <laughs> you'd be like, you somersaulted. I'm also like, this. when you say somersaulting, do you mean careening or do you literally mean somersaulting? Because I'm interested. Flailing towards the veranda? Uh -huh. A million pardons, I must reach the countess. We stop and exchange a cringe. As we watch them literally somersault down the hallway, then hurry after. Why would we cringe? I don't know. I guess it is a shared cringe between us, but I, uh, the player has no idea why. Yeah, I'm actually really confused in this case. Why is the cringe we... because you're so excitable? Is the cringe because if you're trying to reach the countess going, it, it, okay, what if it's not cringe, cringe, like, you know, cringe, but it's more like a grimace kind of, ooh, the countess needed us and we didn't know. Oh, uh, I mean, there was that thing earlier. We got distracted, I think, is what happened. And then we she came and knocked on we your went, door. Oh, shit, we forgot. Because she came and knocked on your door about something and then never told you about it. But I feel like we didn't deviate far enough for that. Well, the thing is, is like, one... I'm a little, I'm sorry, I, I don't, excuse me. Like, I feel like the pacing actually is a little odd there. And sure, like, you could chalk that up to, obviously, we're really slow. But I'm like, if we'd done that, like, if I was just reading that, uh -huh. I probably would have gotten a little bit confused because I'm like, we didn't even really get very far. Mm. We maybe went down a hallway, and suddenly here comes the Chamberlain. While we just very had a very brief conversation, like I well, still also, feel like the pacing on this is weird. Like, um, Portia didn't burst into our room needing something. It was mm. just good morning, Kohai. Yeah, it was very calm. That's also I'm like, why are you guys? And so the thing is, is going. Also, is it? Well, also Kohai doesn't know why Portia came to their room. Yes. So, so both of them cringing, I can only assume is a, woo, if that Chamberlain is running that way, then this must be a big deal. Not like we're at fault, but like a, mm, I should probably pay attention to that. Well, see, and that's why I'm also going, in this case, I would really like to know what we were cringing at, because I can think of quite a few things, including yeah. the whole, holy shit, that was really theatrical mm -hmm. of the Chamberlain. Why the fuck were you literally somersaulting? Because sometimes this game has yeah, done that, where true. you have a character do something that feels really cartoony. And you're like, oh, and that's then you're just like, a as a joke. And, and then like, another character not. goes... The fuck was that? And yeah. you're like, oh. but you've literally done that before, and that was a joke. Wait, what are we doing? As we burst onto the veranda, all three of us, oh, I guess. We run after them incredibly. Okay. We do. They, they somersault quickly, and we, we zoom after them. With aggression. Snake forgotten. Aggressively bursted. Uh, Nadia stands gazing out over the gardens. She doesn't turn right away. Oh, go high. Up early, I see. I can get this. You I can it. switch. My, aren't you in a hurry? Are you and... And you. And you, Portia? Is there something I should know about? We have ignore, ignored the Chamberlain completely. Yes, doesn't exist. We, 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 how, how are you already dressed, my lady? Are you expecting somebody? I thought I would go and get Kohai, and then I would come and assist you in dressing yourself. Because I help you with everything. Literally with everything. Somebody. Wait, I had a feeling I might be. Now, if you would be so patient, the Chamberlain is very eager to speak with me. Oh, I good, guess she knows. <laughs> Did we go faster than the Chamberlain? Uh, no, it says we, so I'm assuming the Chamberlain. So the three the of us all burst in at once, and she. And then we completely forgot She about ignored all of us for a moment, didn't turn around right away, uh -huh. and then she addressed us two who were tailing behind first. I also Got like. It. While the Chamberlain sit there and just do that little hop, hop from one foot to another of it's something important. Uh -huh, like, mm -hmm. Yes. It's the potty dance, except with, it's the, there's an emergency dance. Yes, it's the, ah, listen to me soon. Now, yes, milady, announcing the arrival of the... <laughs> Suddenly, a hooded figure with a smoldering gaze steps up from the garden stairs, followed by the sound of guards. The mysterious figure posts two silver pictures from under... A trailing cloak, and pours out two arcs of sparkling liquid, which swirl together like a storm whoa, cloud. Whoa, 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 That whoa. sounds wild. Okay, so you're going to have to excuse me. This jumped real fast from one thing to another. Did you notice that? I was like, that tone shift? Now, I'm not saying that it can't work, 
But I was like, we went from my lady. Persian immediately just comes in, completely ignores everyone, immediately puts down things, pulls out two pitchers as well as has his two glasses, and just starts pouring. No, no, and there's no glasses. They're just pouring into the air. Oh, we Arcs. swirl together, and you just do this. Yep. I like there, that there's a hooded like... figure with a smoldering gaze, and they reach into their lengthy cloak, which is also the hood, and they just start p- pull out these glorious pictures and just start pouring them into the air. Yeah. And the thing you notice is going, the Chamberlain goes, I'd like to introduce, and then you see this person just ascending the staircase, which you apparently can get to. Get from, onto the veranda. On the veranda from outside, so, even though we came from the inside. But you were, you know, out, you came, came in, in from the outside. From the outside. And so, and then this person is doing this very theatrically. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, I appreciate, like, you can totally have characters be thrown off and you can have a player be thrown off here. I'm just a little bit like, like I said, the, like the pacing, the tone previously seems also, a little weird and suddenly it like this. What it feels we, a little bit like there's something like we have plot and we really want to share it with you right now. What we care about looking at as the MC is very interesting where we're not looking at the cam- Chamberlain sort of floundering or Nadia's response or anything. We're just going, the Chamberlain begins to speak and then look at that person there. Hot damn. Yes. So yes. again, we're going to bring up a lot of stuff in regards to that because as we've mentioned in our other playthroughs, but if you haven't heard that yet, welcome. I don't know how you got this far, but hey. Discourse is Here us. we go. Um, we've actually talked about the fact that due to the fact that this is what is considered to be a first person point of view story. Hmm. So the story is literally being told through a character's point of view who is supposed to be basically the player self-insert, as far as I understand. But can uh, also but just also, be a character. Uh, but also is there kind of their own character. We have discussed that due to the way that this is used, we feel like it's basically either poorly used or badly used most of the time. Because some, a lot of people tend to forget when you're doing a limited first-person perspective, if that's what they're even doing, which is, mm. seems like that's what they want to do, yes. they cannot decide if the character actually has a, quite literally, it's limited to me, my interests, my knowledge, so therefore whatever I focus on is what the character literally finds to be important, or them going, oh shit, we want to convey this information to the player, so we're just going to do that even though it would make no sense. So it seems like they can't decide between going, I'm going to do a first person limited but narrative style story that randomly dumps information on you because it's not actually like they really, because as far as I understand, they really didn't want to actually have, quote, a character that was the first person. They wanted you, quote, to be able to play whoever you want. I was just saying, so to summarize some of that, which, thank you for that entire yeah. thing. Uh, basically, the idea is, if you're in a first-person perspective that is genuinely a limited first person, mm. the character is only going to notice, think about, and talk about things that are important to them as an individual. Yes. That are the type of things they would notice and care about. It's like when so you're in your, your own head. I say, so if, your char- if the character walks into a room and notices the freaking marble columns and the soaring ceiling, it's because that's what their mind and their attention care about. If I walk into a room myself and I do not notice those things because I'm focused on following the damn dog in front of me, Mm -hmm. but the author still describes them through my eyes, then you're running off with the character's personality. Yes. So, that. All right, Stormcloud. The spiral grows until it takes on a human form? Just as the hooded figure drops under the sudden weight of 15 castle guards in a shower of sand. So, there's a hooded figure and... Their retinue? Or these were castle guards following them? I thought they were their guards following them? I thought it was they came along with guards that yeah. were like their guards. No, no, it was just with guards. Yeah. So it wasn't specified so it, who the guards belonged to, but that is interesting that you assumed. But the, I actually assumed that it would have been the guards from the castle. See, and I, I thought it was guards that were their guards because it didn't say with guards pursuing them or coming after them. It was w- guards were with them. Like no, they no. Were a group. And I understand that. I'm just saying, like, it's interesting how, see, this is, again, how people can read uh, media. Uh-huh. I assumed that the guards, uh, even even with the lack of language, were actually basically Nadia's palace guards that were okay. in pursuit of the guy, despite the fact that they literally didn't state that. And this is sometimes a thing to keep in mind when you're writing your own stories, is it's very important to be very careful with your language, because sometimes you can literally lead people into uh, conclusions that aren't actually there. Yeah, that was me. I thought they were showing up with their own retinue of guards. But also, at the same time, honestly, I think my friend's read was actually correct. My read was based on a garden-pathing behavior. And experience. So, so experience from prior books 
where you go, you don't just have a dude bang into a room when you're suddenly going to go, here's plot, without them being pursued by guards. Okay. So I supplied the external, um, basically, material, and if they wanted them to be completely accurate, I feel like here they should have very quickly pointed out, and your character probably should have no noticed from their own first-person perspective here that we just talked about, of going with city with uh, palace guards in pursuit of them or behind them. Yes, or be or pursued by guards, just period. Or just going there figure. behind them. You don't they cuz you don't know if they're being pursued because it was very brief. Or maybe you can tell because maybe you they can. they sashay in and they're in the distance is these guys just running after them. Uh-huh, and that's also true as well. But I also think this is interesting here cuz I'm like you guys took that long to respond to I pulled out two giant pictures from the inside of or the thing is, is they weren't following them. If they were pursuing them the entire time and just caught up to them, because the level of sudden weight of 15 castle guards, did they all just decide to jump on them from a standstill? We were just following you casually, and then they went, oh, oh shit, shit, dog yeah. pile. Well, and see, that's what I mean. I'm like, I would have actually appreciated more feedback for what the fuck was going on in the scenario, and I feel like, again, the character that I still believe should be here uh, -huh. uh that should have been written here and i still think there should have been basically a character that you that that was should have been written to exist uh or even if you had three different ones and the ones that we've read so far right just you had someone who had a clear identity and who they were and then you could sort of build your own ideas around that since that's apparently what they're i don't know and it's like, guards ah! in the shower of sand ah uh, the magician astra gods i told you all about this why have you tackled <laughs> It's it's Astra with his smoldering gaze being extremely theatrical and weird. I was supposed to be Astra. What? <gasps> no wonder this felt fucking strange. Why would Astra do that? Why would this happen? I don't know. Like, why would you show up? I'm a mysterious edge lord. I'm gonna do something super dramatic. The guards don't even realize who I am. I I'm being also going, I told you, this was literally a misdirection joke. I guess. This feels poorly done because that puts basically all your guards again. So Laz from the other routes is being wildly incompetent or literally either just there as a plot convenience. Also, which again just means more or less there's no real danger. There's no real stakes in this story. Have you noticed? That I was just say, however, the guards, I told you about this. Why have you tackled? That is a, a, a sort of a thing of going, yeah, guards are deeply incompetent or also going, they didn't, you didn't tell them in a way that was clear enough for them to understand. But also, like, we have a large number of guards here, so why would Astra just find it funny or fine or whatever to walk through the palace gardens or Not wherever he came from himself. and just have guards being collecting behind him going, shit, who is that? We need to go get him. As it also sounds like the Chamberlain obtained the information that this was basically a sending of Astros, but I'm also, I... Okay, so again, like, for the sake of the story, if you're going to go th tonally or thematically mm -hmm. for what fits, this doesn't feel like this fits for me. This seems really silly. Again, it doesn't establish much other than apparently now Astra is incredibly fucking hasty and just does shit. It also is sort of the sort of thing that, that kind of um, resonates for me, like his sort of behavior towards Julian of going... I just don't care what other people's opinions are or if they're distressed or upset. I don't care if I unsettle your entire palace guard and make them all basically chase after me as an intruder uh, to come and see you. My prerogative is just to do whatever I want. That seems weird for Astra's character. Like, you know, we don't know him all that well. So, and I mean in reference to, like, um, Nadia's shit. Did you remember, though, how polite he was in regards to literally all of Nadia's crap? Oh, He's I know. He's been the rudest ever to fucking Julian? I know. I was just saying, the thing is, is in the in the bits of him that we've seen in the other two routes, he's been very soft, very polite. Uh huh. I um, mean, he's been avoidance as hell, but that doesn't mean... He's indirect, mean, yeah. but he's never obtrusive? Or also this. Or disruptive. This is disruptive. Yeah, this is true. Anyway, why have you tackled? What is the point of this? I don't know. I... I... They usually do. Hello, Countess. I don't... You're really just being a fucking... I don't understand. I can't... Like I said, that sounds like a weirdly performative theatrical edgelord. Yeah. Which I'm... I guess is something we're supposed to know about his character in this case. I guess? Or if that was something he was doing specifically for the Countess? Question mark? I don't know. Astra. Dot, 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 with weight. Pauses Huge with weight. Huge amount of weight there. Yes. Breathes his name and pauses for a lengthy amount of time. It is pregnant. Everyone waits to see what follows. Nothing follows. He brings his hat to his chest, dropping to a knee. This is the roguish entry. Mm. Like, this is the weird rogue entry. Oh, we're entry. saying she's never met him before. What? 
Now, if her memory's been wiped, and this is the first time she's met him, uh, spoilers for the other roots, um, then why would he make his entry like this? Was that what happened in the other ones, though? No, she seemed to already know him. Yes. Again, this one's different. No, I understand. I'm... It's okay. The lack of consistency really hurts me, and I don't... It's this. hard to keep track of things if each one of them is going to have their own completely new canon. So I want this, and also try to build on each other. Because it feels like yeah. they're trying to build on each what other. What I want is for you to have this cake... And have this cake that literally don't go together, and in fact, it's not even a cake; it's a fish. I would say yes. <laughs> like I feel, I feel sort of weird. Like I keep being disjointed every time we jump between one and the other. And like there are interesting things we still learn, but I keep going, "What the fuck? I can't decide what the hell's going on here." And again, where it keeps missing for me is the level of like strange thematic choices, character decisions, character plot points, uh, where they will go, oh, suddenly this thing takes priority, and you're going, why the fuck would that take priority? Where it seemed like you established really strongly, like, in Nadia's route, we were kind of like, oh, we're bringing her back in, and then we immediately return to status quo, like, what the absolute fuck? The thing that I identified as thematically important, I was wrong. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, go keep on. So anyway. Haste to that name. I, we are now learning, if we say we've played nothing else, that um, we have come to the castle to work for Nadia, and Nadia has never actually known or met Astra, only heard of and dreamed of, theoretically, him, which mm -hmm. led her to his shop. Right. To the shop. I say the shop. Mm -hmm. And then we ran into us instead. Oh, God, because that's true, too. Uh -huh. How interesting. Keep going. Uh-huh. And so then she's got this thing of, I know you're basically the master, <clears throat> the teacher of the person that I've hired, and I wanted to know who you were, and now is the day. A face to that name. My name? What's a magician's name to you, Countess? First! Yay! I wonder. You're far younger than I imagined. I thought you would be an old man. You like old men? Uh, no, I just assume that, you know, someone who knows magic is wizened and has spent many years studying it. That an expert on the subject would have spent much of their life becoming such a thing, that's all. Right. Expert, of course, as ah. well scoots back a little bit. Mm, an expert. Even though we haven't quite had that established no, no, at we all don't. that he isn't we don't. an expert. That would be spoilers. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is, actually, as far as I know so far, since there hasn't been any we counter have, to we it. We don't actually know that in, from either of the other routes no, as well. No, we do not. But we've had... we've had um, Some assertions from other people, and this is, again, not to call you out. I've just said, like, so far, there's been a couple of assertions, and I've heard from other people going, he's not actually that good. But I'm like, so far, I've literally seen nothing to really necessarily indicate The story otherwise. indicates that he is the authority. the authority on magic and the most experienced and skilled and the one you everyone would go to. So there's also a really fun thing that my friend and I have noticed in regards to the story. Part of the reason why we keep going, for me at least, that I feel like, so I, won't mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for you, friend. Sure. Um, is that I feel like the way the story treats Asra, mm -hmm. um, there's very much this authoritative thing that follows him. Mm -hmm. And also, there is literally no other magician to counter him. Mm -hmm. So if you want to establish him as a non-expert, bring in an actual expert. So this is one of those things that I get annoyed about in regards to character development, or basically unspoken character development, or mm -hmm. understanding that like that you can convey to the audience. You literally can take a character, because a lot of people, because I could be completely wrong, right? Mm -hmm. He could eat, like he could come soon and be like, I'm actually not an expert, and then it's canon, right? Yes. Um, but the thing is, is like, in most stories, people will go, uh, <laughs> because this is how we read stories, we go, you are the expert, right? You've given me no other uh, knowledge to the to uh, the contrary. The knowledge to the contrary. I have nothing else, which is also why a lot of times my friend and I will go. You literally just contradicted yourself like two sentences ago because so, we have nothing to work from. So the most we can do, like normal people usually do, they go. You have told me a thing. And because I am an honest person, and I believe you are an honest person, and we want nothing but the best, I will take you at face value. Yeah, the thing is, it's like, so um, as far as storytelling conventions go and interpretation of, well, in, in the stories thus far, so, it has been established, yeah. even, even just here, that your character is an apprentice, and he is the master, even if he doesn't like that term. Yes. Because saying I don't like that term doesn't mean I'm not skilled enough to deserve that Yeah, term. not even slightly. So the thing is, is going... All we've got in this route so far is that he is the expert on magic and he's good enough mm -hmm. to teach someone else, to take on an apprentice. And also, 
<sighs> that other people have specifically looked for him. Yep. So all the outer, quote, uh, indicators say, all go, you need to look to ask where that's a real magician, I basically. Say, more than but just... I, I, but my thing was also going, like, if you're looking to provide a counterpoint to that, you really do actually need to introduce, that not just have our character who seems like they just know magic when it's convenient to the plot, and I hate to say it, but that's really how it feels like, but you need to have an actual other magician show up and in a big, huge, basically, establishing event, or whatever it is, actually show or indicate how a, what a, like, expert magician looks like versus whatever Astro is I supposed mean, to be. I mean, there's other ways you can do it. It doesn't have to be like that. But it I'm saying, like, that's be... a way you can do it. Right. You, you can't, that is one way. You could also, like, just have someone who's clearly an authority on the subject be like, ah, oh, yes, and make some kind of establishment of he's not that good. Right. Um, or that experience. I was going to say, but where I was going to go with it is... He hasn't just been sought out by other people. He's been sought out by the reigning authority in the kingdom yes. as the authority on magic. And based So that on... establishes for the reader right. the only precedent of what his skill is. And and for me, I would also say, based on the route that we play with Nadia, so again, we're sort of meta doing some of this because it's unavoidable, really, in its <laughs> own way. Um, even though we're trying. It we're is trying. the thing of going like, Nadia seems to know a shit ton more magic than my friend and I ever assumed at all when we were doing Julian's route. It's true. Like, not even slightly did I even conceive that Nadia was going to take over a, basically, magician character that you're playing and basically direct almost everything. And like tell, that them, was... tell them about their own magical experience. Yeah, that was really baffling. At any rate, he's going to be far younger than she ever imagined in, in the, the next, next one! one! Hey, so uh, thank you so much everybody <laughs> for joining us. Thank you for, for sticking with us. We yes, love actually you. having you here and also hearing your opinions. Again, we ask if you have any insights or anything like that, please keep it to speculation, not to actual spoilers. Or so again, the only things we've played has been Julian's route and um and, 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 and Nadia's route. So if it's a spoiler for this route, please hold on to it. If you don't know and you're just speculating your own headcanon, please feel free. Yes, or absolutely. if you're sharing uh, in a conservative fashion. Yes. Um, and then also the yo, you guys, we really like having you here. We would appreciate it if you uh, actually interacted with the video in some capacity. Like, comment, subscribe. It actually does a lot for us in regards to the YouTube algorithm. Please yep. also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi, our Patreon, and our Twitch. There are some links in the description down below. We'd love to see you there. And I've been Scandal. It also is really cool if you think anyone else would like our content, if you would just share, if you feel comfortable, if you would share it with them. So um, that more people can find out we exist, if you think it would benefit them. And I, I have been Lies. And, and it was great, great playing with you. you. Bye!